it was wonderful to know about the Rubdhyan, where we are talking about like the form, like whoever we love, if we can bring them in, it's easier to focus. Like getting some focus helps a lot for doing dhyan. So I was like really impressed with the Rub Dhyan. I have another question for you, which is more about karma. We talk about karma in terms of uh, in our day-to-day -day life. We do uh, actions and in turn we accumulate more and more good karma as well as bad karma. Mm -hmm. So we have many janmas in the past. How do we bring all those along with us? What is the medium for it to carry over? Oh, good question. So uh, actually when the soul leaves the body, it doesn't go alone. The mind also goes with the soul. So when we talk about ourself, it's actually made up of three parts. The Atma, Sharir, plus Man. Man, or the mind, is an extremely subtle Mayak energy. It's a material energy. Whereas soul is actually divine. Soul is Ansh of Bhagwan. This is getting a little technical, but <laughs> soul is Ansh of Bhagwan. Man is a part of Maya. It's a material energy. But the two stay together. They're always together. So your mind doesn't change from life to life. You have the same mind in every life. And every karm you do actually creates an impression we call a sanskar in the mind, a very subtle impression that retain, the mind retains that impression which has the quality of the thought. Karm really means thoughts. A karm is maybe expressed physically, but the force behind it is the thought. It may be expressed verbally, but the force behind it is the thought. So that thought creates the impression the quality of the thought is what determines the quality of the sanskar and the quality of the karma, good, bad, neutral, devotional. And, and the intensity of it also matters. So you, have, you could have a very good action, a moderately good action, a mildly good action, same with bad actions. So all of that is just naturally impressed or, or recorded in the mind. And since the mind is, you could say, the, the levels of subtlety in the mind go on and on and on and on. So when the medium in which you're recording it is so subtle, you can basically record an infinite, an infinite amount of information in the mind, which is good since we've lived unlimited lifetimes, every soul being eternal, we have unlimited past karm all recorded in our mind. It's called sanchit karm. The karm we're performing in this life is called kriyaman karm. And all of our previous lives karm is also stored, like you can say on a hard disk or a hard drive, deep in our unconscious mind, that sanchit karm is stored. And it goes with us from life to life. It's also, if you want a different model to think of it, we have a karan sharir. So that karan sharir is actually that all those sanskars. That becomes the karan or the cause of our next incarnation. Yes, incarnation. And also part of that sanchit karm is given to us as our prarabd, which is the, the destiny we have to undergo in this particular life. There's still a lot of more sanchit karm there, but we're given a part of that to bhog, and we have to undergo the good and bad consequences in this life. And simultaneously, we're performing new karm. So one shouldn't think that because I have a destiny, everything is destined. Certain things are destined, like the birth we're given, the family we're born into, um, certain things that happen to us that are out of our control, we call good luck or bad luck, that's all destined. But our thoughts, our actions, our words, our reactions to situations, our decisions, those are not destined. And that's how we create the new karm, which becomes our destiny for our next life. So we always have that sanchit, prarabd, and kriyaman karm. The three of them are always with us. Very nice. It's very interesting to know about the 
different things that we, we, we are not aware of in our whole life, right? So it's interesting to know about those, to be aware of it so that we, whatever actions we do, we have to be conscious about what we are doing. Yes. So on a day-to-day -day life, how is your day looks like? What do you do? My day as a, my role actually in uh, serving my Guruji is to be a pracharak, to go around and teach others about what I learned. So it's a great blessing for me to get the chance to share it because this knowledge made such a difference in my life and I love to teach anyway. So uh, to get the chance to, to share it with others and, and thereby also continuously review it myself and keep it fresh in my mind, it's a big blessing. So as a part of that, I travel almost constantly from city to city around the United States and um, give lectures in Hindu temples mostly, uh, sometimes in other venues and uh, a lot in people's homes as well. And I stay in, pretty much stay in a different home every night. So <laughs> that's part of my uh, role as well is to stay with people and give them a chance to ask questions and um, maybe hopefully inspire them on their spiritual path teach them ways that they can integrate spirituality into their daily life. So part of my day is spending time with people. Normally in the evenings I have a lecture or a meditation uh, program. Um, early in the morning I like to get up and do my own meditation. I get up and do Roop Dhyan, listen to Kirtan and do Roop Dhyan. Same thing before I go to sleep at night. I exercise every day because keeping the body healthy is essential for keeping the mind healthy. So I do some yoga, uh, walking, jogging, some kind of exercise every day. And, um, you know, part of my day is studying. Part of my day is administrative uh, things, setting up future programs. That's generally how my life goes. And then I take breaks. I you know, go to India probably twice a year to take part in meditation intensives in our ashrams over there. So those are the things I really look forward to. Yeah, a lot of work. <laughs> I, I, it's what I want to do, so I don't yeah, see you it as work. Doing it. That's, so that's right. a good thing. So what brought you here to Dallas? Uh, here in Dallas, we actually have a, uh, an affiliated center of Radha Madhavdam. Radha Madhavdam is the main U.S. center of Jagat Guru Kripalu Parishat, my Guruji's uh, organization. So although the main center is in Austin, we have affiliated centers throughout the US and one of those is here in Dallas in Irving. It's called Radha Govinda Dham. So uh, I'm actually speaking here this whole week, uh, giving a, a series of lectures on the Leelas of Sri Krishna described as described in the Bhagavatam, the Srimad Bhagavat Puran. So uh, if anyone wants to come out, they can come and join us at the Mandir. Yeah, that's interesting. Radha Govindam in that's, Irving, Texas. That's right. So it's in the MacArthur area, right? That's right. Yeah, so and, interesting. Uh, you can we just uh, go attend. Google Radha Govindam Dallas and you'll, you'll find us. So I heard that you have a beautiful voice. So can you just sing us a small kirtan? Uh, sure. I can sing a couple lines of a, of a bhajan composed by my Guruji, a simple Radhe Govind. Radhe Radhe Govind, Govind Radhe. Radhe Radhe Govind, Govind Radhe. Radhe Radhe Govind, Govind Radhe. Radhe Radhe Govind, Govind Radhe, Radhe Radhe Govind, Govind Radhe. Pulo Vrindavan Bihari Lal Ki Jai. Beautifully sung. Thanks a lot. We were like really very much happy that we had the pleasure to talk to you and also to hear your bhajan a little bit. It's so our viewers can definitely go to Radha Govindam 
in Irving, Texas to enjoy more of Swamiji's lectures and uh, probably his bhajans too. Thank you. <laughs>